In this video, I'll introduce the idea of a one-sided limit. In the first video, we looked at a function that had a hole at x equals 2. Our goal was to find the precise height of the hole, and this height was the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. This limit exists if it's possible to approximate the height of the hole using f as accurately as desired. To find the value of this limit, we first found an overestimate of its value. And then we found an underestimate of its value. The amount of error for the underestimate, that is, the difference between the underestimate and the value of the limit, was shown by the length of this red line, and the amount of error for the overestimate was shown by the length of this line. Both of these errors are less than the distance between the overestimate and the underestimate. So by moving the over and underestimate closer to each other, we could make our error as small as we desired. And as we did this, the value that the approximations approach is the value of the limit. So, in this case, the value of the limit to three decimal places was 3.785. Now, let's think about the following scenario. What if the function looked like this? Now, it appears that we have two different holes with two different heights. So we can't talk about the height or the value because there isn't a single height or a single value. So we need another way to think about limits that can account for this situation. Let's first look at values of x that are less than 2 and imagine these values getting closer to 2. To help visualize the function for these values, I'm going to temporarily dim the piece of the function that corresponds with values of x that are greater than 2. So now we're thinking about the height of this hole. We can pick a value of x and use f to make an estimate, which will have some associated error. And if we look at values of x that are closer to 2, we can use f to make this error as small as desired, and the value that f approaches will be a limit. Since we are only considering values of x that are less than 2, we write the limit like this. In this new notation, a negative sign has been added as an exponent of 2, and we call this the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x. The value of this limit would be the height of the hole created at the endpoint. Since the hole is the same as in our original function, the height of this hole to three decimal places would still be 3.785. Now, what about the other piece of the function for values of x that are larger than 2? To help us think about this, I'll temporarily dim the piece of the function corresponding to values of x that are less than 2. And it's clear that the height of this hole is not 3.785. To find the height of this hole, we can look at values of x that are greater than 2. When we imagine these values of x getting closer to 2, the height of the hole is written like this, and we call this the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x indicated by the positive sign. We can approximate the height of the hole, and thus the value of this limit, using f evaluated at values of x that are greater than 2, such as x equals 2.5, which gives an underestimate of 1.002. Even though we do not precisely know the value of this limit, we can visually show the amount of error. We can get a better approximation by making x closer to 2. Clearly, 2.012 is a better approximation to the value of the limit from the right, but how good is it? If this limit exists, we should be able to estimate it to within 0.01 of the actual value. To help us do this, let's add a grid, and then zoom in. Since we don't know the exact value of the limit, we don't know exactly how large the error is. But since the height of the hole is clearly less than 2.04, and we know that the size of the error, shown in red, must be no larger than the length of this orange line, which stretches from our approximation to 2.04, well, in this case, the orange line has length 0.028, so the error might be as large as 0.028. Let's make our value of x closer to 2 to improve our approximation. 
Now we have made the length of the orange line less than 0.01, which makes our total error less than 0.01. So 2.03 is an estimate within 0.01 of the actual value of the limit from the right. And we can make even better approximations. Let's zoom in to see how close we are now. We can see that 2.037 is larger than the height of the hole. So if we use this to bound our error, we can see that our approximation of 2.0365 has an error of at most 0.0005. So 2.036 would be an accurate value for the limit to three decimal places. Let's zoom back out and think about the heights of these holes. First, let's look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. We saw that we could make our approximations as close to 3.785 as we desired. So, to three decimal places, 3.785 was the value of the limit from the left. Now, for the limit from the right, we saw that we could make our approximations as close to 2.036 as we desired. So, the value of this limit to three decimal places is 2.036. What if we think about the limit of f of x as x approaches 2? We can see that the two one-sided limits have different values. Thus, there is no single number that we can use to approximate the height of both of these holes as accurately as we desire. So we say that the overall limit does not exist. In summary, a one-sided limit exists if it's possible to approximate the height of a hole using f as accurately as desired from one direction. The value that the approximations approach from one direction is the value of the limit. And if the one-sided limits have different values, then the overall limit does not exist.